presents The Raw Files Hello folks, welcome to Ashford Daily, The Raw Files again and this is the really big interview. We're here on the Grand Workshop and um, with our host, the fabulous Jürgen Tanani. So it's it's been an absolutely amazing week, this has. Um, you know, we've had photographers from all over the globe come in, um, and yourself and your business advice, Annie. Um, what are you hoping that the photographers that have been here will take away with them? We hope uh, uh, my, my biggest passion is that not to kill our industry. My, my message out there is that enjoy what you're doing, as we all do, and charge for your hard work because it's a, there's a work involved in this don't think that you're not working you are working so don't discount don't give anything away for free don't give our industry away i know we've had a lot of uh, mention of shoot and burn this week haven't we? that's it's, right it's, yeah. um, and 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 i be, uh, uh, it's it's very important that we don't become the shoot shoot and burner and not make any money out of it because that's going to fade out so quickly. Yeah. And if you are one of the shoot and burn, think twice because you're not going to stay in the business for, for very long. Right. And, and advice towards um, up and coming photographers now that want to sort of hit that uh, high end of the market, um, what would you suggest um, uh, to improve if, the style? If you want to be the best and if you want to enjoy and make money out of in this industry first thing you need to do is go and learn from a person who has a great business don't think that coming out of the camera store or coming out of the house being a full-time photographer is going to make you what you want to be you need to learn from the people who are really in business and i think it's really important that people do research into their workshops that they're attending as well that's right. you know that is is really and that's proven this week the amount of attendees that have come on your workshop you see um we we we, we don't charge 50 dollars for a workshop because it's not about quick money it's about how we are going to educate so to educate well we need quality uh, quality speakers quality location and everything should be, should be part of it so you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a de- dedicated educator and I, I, I want to educate the maximum but also I need to live I, I need to have life so if I'm gonna go away from home and away from my family I need, I need to be, selective. be very be selective, selective. Yeah. I think Last year we did less workshops and seminars, and this year too, uh, simply for the fact that Yevon does not believe that he can teach and do seminars only as a business, as a living, because he prefers to practice, keep evolving in his style, technology, the shoot, the trends, the market, set trends, and then come back and teach people something new rather than just theory and formulas. Mm-hmm. What, he te- what he likes to teach is what he's just experimented, discovered, developed, and, and has worked. Mm-hmm. And, and come up with new things at all times, and never theory. It's actually the real thing that happens in our daily studio. Mm-hmm. And we've got a very, very busy studio, 120 weddings a year, so it's a seriously successful business. So what we preach is very much from not just the artistic point of view, but from a very successful studio, especially in today's economic climate of the world. Yeah. How important do you feel that um, having a good brand image and website and blog is at the moment for photographers? Yeah, today I think it's important, and you can say more about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, very important because even though the our market, the brides will still buy magazines. Uh, you can. I have seen over the last 18 months that every advertisement in a bridal magazine looks pretty much the same. They're all fantastic quality pictures. So <coughs> that needs, is the portal towards your website and the website is what's going to attract them to actually get up and ring you and actually come in. So uh, it's important to excite them as much on the website have amazing images and then of course um, the most important is the first contact, port of contact which is the voice behind the phone 
uh, when they ring you and what you're going to do to entice them to come in and spend time with you, view and obviously book. Yeah, yeah. So judging that then, how we see the wedding industry at the moment, where do you think it's going to be in say five years time? How, how do you think the wedding photography? Where Irant and I see it, we've seen this type of down circle a couple of times and we see internationally this is probably the one that's impacted the most um, it's going to clean up the riffraff there's a lot of riffraff out there thank, thank you very much I'm glad thank you have a nice and safe trip okay thank you thank you bye bye it's live it's good it's live it's the best money I've spent and that was not planned actually put that in there we can't get it better than that there's a delegate leaving there yeah that's great Okay. Mar so, marketing without trying. Oh no. So we feel that it's going to clean up a lot of riffraff because with digital cameras being so readily available and people thinking, heck, I can take a nice picture, um, it's going to evolve into, okay, can I make a real living out of it? And what does it take to be a pro, not just a clicker? Mm -hmm. And we feel in five years' time there's going to be improvements, there's going to be less riffraff and the pros who have managed to get through this mm. will do even better. Yeah. Um, Market-wise, it really is not going to change the way we see it. Marriages have happened forever and will continue. Girls still have the dream of being married one day, have a wedding, wear the gown. Um, I can't see that changing in my perspective for a very long time, not in my lifetime anyway. Mm. And um, it's really up to us as an industry to educate the bride that we are a very important service for her dream day. Her dream day is never going to change. We have to educate that very client that we are very important on that day. As much as she thinks immediately flowers, white gown, shoes, reception, church, she should immediately think a professional photographer, not a clicker. Yes. Yeah. I think it's really important that's actually it's yeah. people okay, so uh, to recognise the, yeah. um, the creativity of the photographers yes. as well. You know. And that's where I also think the um, the new development which Yervan has been quite instrumental in is changing traditional style of photography into fine art in the wedding family of photographers is going to make an impact because today the girls are highly influenced by media a lot of reality shows there's model shows etc and today young girls want to be rock stars full stop mm -hmm. and the clothing shops tell them so the TV tells them so and on their wedding dates they're only there with they can actually be the star well we should treat them as one and make pictures to look like what they imagine in those fashion magazines and the books and the uh, TVs and the uh, websites. Mm -hmm. It is a rock star generation. So if we lag behind and say, oh no, we do traditional photos, I don't think these young girls are going to want to book us. So we have to give them what they want. And that includes the finishing as well. Absolutely. She wants to be a model. She wants to be a rock star on her wedding day. Well, yes, it's a marriage. But how solemn has that marriage um, vow remained nowadays? A lot has changed. I believe that the young ones are going into marriage for their reasons, obviously, their love and commitment, but their bigger fo focus is the wedding day and what a show they're going to put on, the theme, the look. And do you think a priest or a florist uh, is going to deliver as much result for them as a photographer? I think our role actually has a lot of potential to satisfy their need of being rock star. Make them, treat them, and then show them the product. And really, we better wake up and think alike, not just capture a beautiful moment or a tear in the eye. These yeah. girls want to be rock stars. So as we're talking about the overall look then, yeah, but, um, obviously then Photoshop and Photoshop Actions is a very important tool for modern photographers uh, to... Yeah, it have. could be with other, uh, let's not only give Photoshop the title, but it should be finished somehow, somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what comes out of the camera is not the final, final product. You have imagined the picture and it should be the way you've imagined it. Yeah and the camera doesn't know your brain. Yeah, you frame it, you take the shot, but the camera captures many things and yeah. you have to direct to what you want to see more. And that was done the same on film. So 
I don't know why Photoshop is a big deal. Everyone exaggerates it, uh, you know. It's, it's the new form of creating art and it's, it's beautiful because it opens your mind more and you can be creative more. Mm. Yes. It's, it's almost like a two-stage process it now. Is. It's, oh, it's, it's always been. And then the post -process mm. Always the been. Well, it hasn't it has always yeah. been like that. I mean, Yerman's background is um, dark room, but my grandparents were photographers back home in Ethiopia. And as a very little girl, I remember watching my grandmother um, retouching glass glass mm. negatives. negatives. Mm. And I was really fascinated sitting there watching her do that or, or coloring actual prints. And now I yes, see my husband yeah. all do that type of thing in 40 years later, 45 years later, on his computer. But I used to sit and watch my grandma do that. So what has changed? Why this animosity towards mm. finishing? Yeah. It's always been done. It's required. And today, let's ask a very important question. Um, people are saying I'm purist. I'm straight out of camera or sook, I found out the other day, S -double -O -C. And I thought, wait a minute, as a woman, why do I wear makeup? Why do I dye my hair? Why do I like buying clothes and changing my look? Because a woman wants to look better than what she thinks she sees herself in the mirror. And in her pictures, she she wants that. Mm -hmm. Give me the look I think I want to Anyway, look. that suk business. And that's Photoshop. It, that suk business, S -O -O C means straight out of camera. What I got out of camera was a, a, an a, a unusual thing. It looked like it was a negative, so it didn't look anything like what I shot. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I went to the dark room and printed, and printed it, you know, and printed the way I wanted. Yeah. So what's this bullshit about? Sook. Sook. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> it never I'm looked. So glad we've got at least one bullshit in there. Yeah. Had to be there. So so the really. <laughs> Uh, most of the time, the people who talk about souk are the people who can't do the rest. That's why they say I'm a purist, and, and yeah. it's okay. Be a purist. That's fine. I'm not a purist. I'm not born pure. I'm a. Uh, I'm not a virgin. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've had a real melting pot of different nationalities here oh, the last week, which has been fantastic to learn how different countries operate. But if you were to get to actually say three global trends that are emerging in the wedding uh, photography business over the next 12 months, and you could spearhead them, what would you say they were? Mm, Eastern Europe is really coming alive, lips and bounds. I feel their style is highly stylized in the shoot. Yep. Uh, a lot of props, the stand, very glittery. Their finishing is a little bit over the top. I think um, they've just discovered and they're doing that, but it may be tamed. But besides that, we've seen that these non-English speaking countries have got some amazing talent behind cameras mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we have not yet discovered. Yeah. Amazing yeah. artists. Other than that, I don't think it's, it's a, uh, there's a, a lot more new developments at the moment. It's, it's the, the biggest problem is where am I going to settle, How, in what direction I'm going to take. So people are rebuilding their businesses and we're not the only industry. And one um, dilemma that I've heard, especially over the last four day, five days during this international workshop is pricing point. Really, the world is a little bit confused about what are we worth. Now, this is something we should all look into. What are we really worth? Plumbers know what they're worth. Electricians yeah. do. But as photographers, wedding photographers, we are all questioning, well, what am I worth? Do I go by the price of the album and profit on that? Or what is my talent worth? Is a question that was quite um, prominent at this workshop. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, through the discussions with everybody, outside of the workshop that was very prominent yeah. as well actually yeah. yeah it's not what price one of my work yeah. Yeah. Mm. i know there's a real concern in the uk with the, the shoot and burn mm. guys that do it as a part-time mm. job at the weekend who in their own right some of them are quite good photographers yeah. but yeah, but pushing that keeping that silly price there and but i think that was always there mm. even film days we had the shoot and burn so that that's really doesn't affect my business because yeah. whoever is going to spend the money, they will look for quality and that business mm -hmm. is there. Uh, These guys can't survive because there is no longevity. I mean, how many weddings can you shoot in a year? 48 mm -hmm. by 1500. 
can you really retire on that one day? What assets can you acquire with that? What future are you building with that? And so in, it's very short term. And in that type of business, there's no ambition, there's no passion because we book, we design books, we create books. Uh, we're more involved in the post-production and everything. So that's where it becomes passion. When you don't do any of this, you don't even know what you shot because, uh, yeah, we, we might find a couple of good shots, keep it for yourself. The rest is gone and you don't know how it's going to end up. So, yeah, yeah it's... So key thing from that to take on board then is that they're, if they're doing a lot of weddings it's almost like a conveyor belt it's a factory yes. you're not getting the artistic input yeah. that you would necessarily offer the true professional yeah. guest. you see yeah. uh, I can give you a very simple example uh, uh, my house needs painting I, I get the painter and he paints and I say I'll oh, leave a bit of the paint in the can so if I need to I'll, I will retouch that paint dries and I've never done the retouching. I, I call another painter and he will do it again. So, so what, these files that are going to go away from you are not going to do anything to you. you know? yeah, it's, useless it's very useless. Do you think it's a good idea for a professional photographer now to, to join a, a good association? I oh, definitely. We members of the MPA and it's the WPPI. It's, it's, Absolutely. it's very important. And, and once we have the right membership, the associations, then it will help us uh, have an image and where we will belong. You know, I, I see also the future of our industry is going more into the service than the product product will be similar with everyone but the service chart will be different from one photographer to the other yeah. and that's what will separate us from the rest if we make the albums cheaper the bride is going to look out there and say oh his price is cheap it's quite reasonable so why should I bother buying and putting it together myself yeah. Yeah. what they're going to say is okay now we need to decide which photographer we want because the album is the same price the picture is the same price now we're going to decide who we like. We like George. He's fifty dollars, and the any the other one is going to say, "I like Tom. He's two thousand dollars." So they're going to compare the two, not because how much they charge, because what, who, who, whose job they like better. Mm -hmm. If they like Tom, they're going to pay the two thousand dollar and get him, and then the rest is going to be similar price with everyone. So we need to become a service provider and not pro product seller mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at the moment all our prices are based on product album paid $200 album cover so much uh, so it needs to be about the service not about the about product the talent the expertise the service yeah. we've recently changed our, our pricing mechanisms and we you know we, we charge on coverage and then it's uh, additional uh, product um, options then are added yeah. to that because we, we have put a value on our uh, creatives so, exactly you know, exactly I, I think more people need to do that yeah, yeah. absolutely and those are the people who are, who are going to survive who provide the service yeah. mm. um, in terms of direct marketing um, is there any tips that you can give people just three quick tips in terms of uh, yeah. direct marketing that they need to do you know, I wish I could, Mary, but we don't do any direct marketing for a couple of reasons. A, I haven't had the time to sit and implement it. And then secondly, at this moment in our life, um, this is pretty um, funny way to put it, but we cannot afford to have more business. We just don't have the stuff to handle it. And we refuse to just hire people for the sake of generating income and doing this shit. Yerman is adamant then whatever product um, comes out of our studio has the Yerman seal on it, the signature style and the high quality. For that, he trains people. And at the moment, um, there is no time for Yerman to train so that we can expand. Um, so, no, we haven't dived into that yet. Um, I don't know when I will, but the, the truth is I'm not qualified to answer it because we just don't do yeah. it. Yeah. But the main thing is it just gets quality and mm. style and images yeah. that people instantly recognise yeah. yours and that's, yeah. that's, that's really that's the key. Exactly. Exactly. Under people's noses, exactly. instead of exactly. I love yeah. that, I want that. Yeah. Not how much is it, it's just I want it. I want it, yeah. yes. Yeah. And finally, is what are the plans for Yervant International over the next 12 months? Are you going to be doing new training courses and workshops? I think there will be some, but we still haven't decided. Venice is always there. 
Venice is a staple. A Every staple. October, we dedicate two weeks to separate groups in Venice. It's um, it's everyone's home, away from home, and no matter where we go around the world, it seems to be the most perfect canvas for the artistic soul. Uh, you can paint there, you can write poems there, listen to music, write music, take pictures. It's just so readily available and so inspirational. We can't get away from Venice. It's a very popular spot for photographers and uh, we will continue doing Venice every October, the first weeks of October, for as long as we can. This is the first time we've done the International Big Group. Um, it was a very good learning experience for us. Um, I certainly want to repeat it. I think every two years we will pick a nice destination. Again, some talented, um, respectable photographers. Uh, photographers who will educate, give their time and educate, and invite people internationally to benefit from it. Um, I think it, will, it proved that it was needed, that no matter what country you come from, what l language or accent of the language, we are all speaking wedding yeah. photography. Yeah. And yeah. we had a, a lot of people here who didn't speak the English language very well, but they got so much out of this workshop. Yeah. That's it, and I think that's proven as well, and that mm. we've all connected, and yeah. we're going to yes. keep in touch. Yeah. Yes. And it's, even though it was a big group, everybody got on, yes. held, and it was fantastic. we're all experiencing the same yeah. issues and highs and lows. Yes. So, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, from all corners of the world, it's just one language, we're in photography. And that's what it's all about, networking, communicating, yeah. sharing yeah. knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Really, it, it was amazing. So, guys, if people want to get in contact with you about future workshops, what's the best um, way? I, s no, I will volunteer me. myself because Yevan gets a lot of emails and um, flags them and sometimes passes them on to me. So for a reliable response and speedy one, it's Annie <laughs> at Yervant.com. Annie with one N, A-N-I-E at Yervant.com. We also have a Facebook uh, page which is public, open to public. It's Yervant and Annie Workshop Family. Which, which I can't um, be a member because I have too many friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, people can just join in. It's become a mini forum yeah. uh, to exchange pictures, ideas. So that's a good one to join and be part of. And I can personally recommend that. That's a, it's a really good uh, mm. group to be a member of mm. because and everybody... No matter which co country you're from, you actually have mm. the same issues and same yes. needs and wants and questions. Mm. So join up. Yep. Okay, well, thank you guys. Uh, thank that you. was Yervant Ali, and we're uh, coming you from the beautiful island of Corfu. It's been a fabulous week. And thank I you guys. See you very I think we enjoyed soon. it. You've okay. been very kind. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.